Okay, hello everyone. So I think uh, most students are here. Let me see. So we will continue with the circuit programming. And as we discussed uh, from this lab on, we will have three labs on circuit programming. Okay, so, uh, so uh, we will go through the C API. Basically, uh, it's the foundation of our API okay, for circuit programming, but uh, you probably want to use Python API. Java is also fine, okay, C API is too low level. Unless you, you're happy with C, C programming, you can try that. Okay, so as we discussed last time, so the reason that we are covering C API is because uh, the C socket is the standard and uh, every other you know, language basically use uh, circuit programming down there probably is just the same as the uh, C circuits. Okay, it's a wrapper of the C circuits. Okay, I see some students still coming. Okay, let's continue. Maybe. And uh, this is what we also covered earlier, right? So uh, uh, C circuit initially was called a Berkeley circuit all the way now to call the POSIX circuit. Right? So basically in Unix-like systems, okay? like Linux also using like POSIX. Right? So, and it's an original API for TCP IP. And we have seen last time a chapter that uh, discuss a Python API. Okay, so uh, basically all the APIs are almost the same. Okay, uh, all other socket APIs are just the same as C sockets, but uh, there's some language difference. Okay. And we discussed that we will use a uh, client server design. Right? So we have, uh, let's say many parties that want to provide a service, okay? And we also have many parties who want to uh, use a service, okay? To get them together, we wanted the service providers to always be on. So this is called a client server architecture, okay? So the server will just be responding to the requests, right? So the client will initiate the communication, okay? But the client can join whenever the client wants, okay, the server will be responding. So it needs to be on all the time, listening on the channel, right? So at least one side has to wait for the other here, right? If you wanna uh, to uh, join whenever you want to, then the server has to be uh, on and waiting for you all the time, right? So, so the server will sit and wait, okay? And the client will locate the server and ensure the contact. That's why it's very important that you know, you know what service you are, you have, right? It's IP address and port number, right? Because in the server, maybe there are multiple services, right? Because one or more parties want to provide services, okay? So that could be multiple servers, uh, server programs running there. You need to say where, which program you want to communicate with, okay? And usually you will use a DNS, right? So the, you will give the domain name, right? And the, the DNS server will translate it into the IP address, okay? Usually local the cache. And so here are the key differences between client and server, right? So we have covered some of them and uh, plus thing, thing simple, right? Client, it can be a simple serial program, just to send a message and receive the response. And uh, let's say show in the browser or do something, have a simple process, okay? Server has to consider many client connecting, right? So it has always been on and uh, it should be privileged program uh, in, in the server machines operating system, right? And uh, should be, able to answer many, many different queries together, right? Many, many different requests together, okay? Instead of just one, one at a time. And uh, uh, as we said, they are sharing different layers, right? application layer, transport layer, and network layer. So these we covered last time, so I will go a little bit quicker. Uh, it's just a warm up, okay? And we call it circuits, right? So we know that this is the call circuit, right? So you can plug your, uh, you know, the device and get electricity, right? And uh, this is also called a socket, right? So you can insert what you, uh, like a uh, bars or whatever computer device you need, right? So the socket is more like a door, okay? So like you insert stuff, right? For us, it's mainly uh, something like this, right? So we are, we are putting the data, right? Into this uh, port, right? So, and then hopefully it will be received on the other side, right? You can think about it as a door, okay? And you just put data data into the TCP or UDP, right? So function, it's like a door for you, okay? And uh, then the other side will uh, like uh, open the door and get the stuff, right? You, you will 
send stuff and it closed off. Like there's something like there's someone delivering things door to door okay, for you. And circuit calls are blocking, which means if you, let's say you say, hi, I want to re receive something, okay? Then you are keeping waiting, okay, until you receive something, right? This is called a blocking. Sending something is the same. If you say, I want to send something, you are sending it until, let's say, the network device confirm that it's fully sent onto the wall, okay? So this is blocking, and sometimes you want to have non-blocking uh, functionality, right? So, uh, like a lot of language provides, uh, like library provides that, okay, like MPI. Okay, so basically you, you say, hey, I want to send that, but I will pull it, right? If it's busy, it's not ready yet, I, I will continue to do some other processing in the CPU. And I, I send that, I come back, look back and see whether it's ready again. Until it's ready, then I, I maybe receive the data, from them, okay? So that will be more efficient if you have a single thread, right? So computing thread, right? So it can do something additional uh, other than just uh, sitting there waiting for the buffer to be received or sent. Okay. I see two questions. Let me let me see. Okay. Oh yeah, so this is uh, uh, I think uh uh Audi uh, uh, knows what is that that slot, right? So okay, yeah. Okay, so let's let's con uh, continue. Okay. So here the C API is exactly the same as a uh, you know, Python API. You can see the structure. It's very similar to the Python API we, we, we told you to read, right? In the, uh, you know, in, in the top-down approach textbook for networking, okay? So on the client, it's very simple. You get a host name, right? Get a host by name, which, which server you want to communicate, okay? The host name uh, actually is, like, like a, just like a domain name, right? So it's, it's just a local domain, right? So it's the host name, uh, door something something, right? So it's the first one, okay? The host name, right? So, and uh, you wanna, usually in your local area network, right? So you, you just need a host name to be, okay? Because the IP and the host the mapping is zero, okay? And then once you get a host machine, you want to open a socket, right? Okay? And uh, after opening the socket, uh, then you can connect. Right, so connect means I, I want to do a three-way handshake with the server, right? Because it's a TCP view, CP, TCP connection. So here we are only talking about TCP, okay? Because our project will only use TCP. TCP is a you know guaranteed service, which means you you send something, it's guaranteed to be received by the other side, okay? And then you will run, write, or stand. They are the same function, okay? They are the, they are doing the same thing, okay? just different names, okay? Send some content. Right, and then the server will do some processing and send it back, and then you see. Right, and maybe you can show that on the screen, and then you can close. Right, so the server side, as we said, it's uh, the first thing to create a new socket, and bind it to a port number. Right, then you can listen on that. Thing. Right, and whenever someone called connect, right, so you will uh, you will answer by accept. Okay, and then you will read the data, which is uh, what uh, line four on the left send. Okay, and then you will also you know. Uh, you know, you will also, uh, after you get the data, right, you will do some processing and then you send it back, okay? So you will write, okay? And finally close. When you close, actually this accept will create a new circuit. You are closing this circuit, okay? This circuit will always be on and listen. Right? So this is a high overview of what these functions are doing. And next we will go one by one on these functions, right? Before I move on, any questions? Okay, let's continue. Now we will first look at the server side. So the first function is a socket function, a socket in, in, uh, three integers inside, okay? So, so I think this is not a very descriptive. Let me, let me see whether we can get a browser to show. Okay, let's, let's copy this. Uh, let's just copy this name here. I think it's not easy to copy once. Okay. So, okay. Okay, so, so it's actually uh, talking about a, a you know, API like this, right? So have a socket returns the integer. 
and the input is pass through into this. Okay, so uh, this may be more descriptive. Okay, of course in C you need to include sys or socket edge, right? Usually if you are in Linux, right? Sys means in, in the operating system you have a library. Okay, we have the circuits. So let's look at what are the three input arguments. Okay, so this is the basic call used by clients and servers to get a socket. Right? You need to get a new socket object. And there are three parameters, as we say here, right? domain, time, and scope. Okay. So the first is a domain. It's usually constant. Okay. Uh, usually you, you just put a PF uh, INAP. Okay. So uh, you can also put ANAP, right? So you, you can see uh, both are fine. Okay. So you, this is, uh, I think they, they have specific meaning, right? So here you can see the meaning. Right? So for example, INAP6 is IPv6, right? INAP is IPv4. So, uh, so basically, we're using IP protocol, right? So down there, okay. Uh, the IPv4 is enough, okay. So I think uh, that you can also put uh, like uh, some others. Uh, there are several things that does the same job. Okay? I think you can just put INAP, which is just to say, hey, I'm using IPv4 down there, and this socket will be created with IPv4 down there, right? And then you know this is the the network layer code, right? We also need to specify what's the uh, uh, transport layer code, okay? Stream is uh, TCP. You think about streams, right? Stream of data, it's like uh, uh, you, you want some, uh, you want some guarantee that right? flow and the order is automatic, okay? Uh, another data, uh, another option you can put is a D graph, right? Which is a data graph. So this is more like you just send a datagram, whether you get it or not, like the other side uh, can drop some packets, it's fine, right? When you watch your YouTube video, right? if your bandwidth is not high enough, then they will, you will probably lose some uh, frames, but that's fine, okay? But we were, because in this project we will use TCP, we want to guarantee the uh, delivery of message, right? We will just use socket stream, okay? Uh, this is IPv4, this is TCP, okay? These two will be, Put in the first two arguments, domain and then type. Okay. So this is uh, TCP. Okay. If you want to use UDP, you can use a DGRAM. Okay. And uh, the other protocol is usually zero. Okay. So uh, here, okay. You just uh, put it zero there. It's fine. Okay. If you want to see why it's zero, you can see there's some explanations. Right? So, uh, I, I cannot find it somehow, let me see. But anyway, so usually we just put it zero there. Okay, so there's some meaning, but it's no longer useful, okay. You, uh, the third parameter always zero, okay. And it will return a file descriptor, right? So we discussed all the IO devices are considered similar to a file, whether it's a screen or whether it's a network interface car, right? It's, it's similar to a file, okay. Uh, file descriptor is an integer. Usually, uh, you know, a positive integer, at least a non negative, could be zero. But usually, it's positive. Okay? So, what if you get a negative one, right? So, that means you, you don't get successfully a uniquely defined number for your file descriptor. Right? So, then it means some error is happening. Okay? So, you know, uh, so the, here you can see these are actually, these are actually constant. Okay? These are actually numbers defined somewhere, okay? Uh, it's, it's it, using C, we have the define, right? So there's also constant int, like in Java, right? So we can define some constant, constants, okay? Why there are so many constants, right? Besides uh, TCP, UDP, and uh, besides IP, V4, V6, we also have a lot of others, right? Because these are the most commonly used protocols, right? So we also have some other kind of protocols that is maybe less, less widely used, uh, at least for this course, but they are also necessary, okay? So put simply, uh, you know, the internet isn't the, you know, isn't the only network domain, right? So you can also build a local network in some different protocols. And the TCP UDP are also not the only transport protocol, right? So you also have like uh, ICMP, etc. Right? So and in theory, right, transport protocols might also have different dialects, right? So which means, uh, this is just for the protocol we, we widely use, right? So we can use the internet. You can even design your own protocol with, by giving a new customer, okay? Uh, I see a question about website link. 
Oh, website link. You mean this website link? I think uh, I, I can copy it in the chat. Okay, so but you just Google Google the API, you will find. It. Okay, let me let me try to copy in the chat. Yeah, so so it's here. But again, you when you use Python API, you probably want to find the Python API. So the best way is just Google. Okay, for example, socket Python API. Right, so you just Google it, uh, and uh, you will you will get it. Right, so like if you want to look at circuits, like creating circuits, okay, so you have the circuit program, right? It's the same, okay, the family, by right, I, 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 right, and the stream, and proxy is usually zero, right? Okay, so by default, these are default values in Python, so you don't specify anything, you will get this circuit, right? Uh, because if you don't specify it, we'll just use it, okay? So again, you can Google these things, but we are just going go through these things, you know what to Google, right? So you know there are so many functions there, See another chat. Okay, yeah. So again, if you want to bind, you can just Google bind. For example, if you come here, you can see I Googled socket, right? So you can use bind. I probably will find. It. So, oh, you need to say this is socket program. Right, you, you just get bind. Okay, so Google is pretty powerful. So in bind, we can see that, uh, uh, you know, uh, you, again, remember we have the FD, which is the file descriptor, right? So each socket is binded to a unique file descriptor, okay? Right? Because when you send, you write, uh, send or receive stuff from different uh, sockets, right? It's different connections, different channels, right? You, you have, it's uniquely defined by a source and destination IP address and uh, port numbers, okay? So you need to specify where you want to bind, right? And you remember we are talking about the server program first, okay? So then you need to give the socket address, okay? And then the, the address map. So, so this is looking like a crazily low level details, okay? So in Python, it will be a lot easier. So, so you know, uh, in C language, we, C is not an OOP, right? So C++ is, right? By that time, we don't have class in C, so we call it a struct, where we can bundle a bunch of different attributes into one object. And in C language, we have to always write this struct with a, the class name, okay? With a type name, okay? Uh, in C++, you can still use struct, you don't need this. Okay, but, but just think about it's a, a type, right? In Python, we don't even need a type, okay? And uh, so in C++, usually, in C, it's a deep copy, right? So deep copy, when you, when you see something, and if this address has a lot of fields, okay? It will, you will create a deep copy of that, right? You, usually you don't want it. Like in Python, it's called a reference, right? And C++, you also have a reference, which is this one. And in Python, by default, it's reference, which means you don't de do deep copy. You have a pointed address pointed, right? You don't create a new something, okay? Right, so in order to do that, in C, we don't have that, uh, that concept of reference. So they use a pointer and then say, how large the size is, okay? So that's, that's basically a trade-off. But if you are using Python or even Java, this, these details will no longer be, you don't care about these details, right? So put simply, it's just a, you know, the socket you just get, you put the number there, right? And then you bind it to a, a ad address, address object, okay? That's all you do, right? So why is this necessary, right? So because, you know, you want a, a social socket to a network interface support, right? So what you do usually, you know, you need to specify in the address object, which, I, uh, which port number right, and you want to connect, okay? And uh, so, because you, you are listening, right? Usually when you listen, you think about, uh, for example, you are the server, okay? You just get a handle, which is assigned a number 8888, okay? And now this, this file descriptor should be bounded to the network interface card, right? So I, I want to listen at port, let's say port 80, okay? Right, I, I, IP address is my IP address, right? Okay, right, because I'm the server, okay? So this is the source IP address. The other side, the uh, IP address, I, I, I should leave it open right now, okay? Because, you know, I don't know who, who will be communicating with me. When they communicate with me, the TCP package will contain its IP address in the port. Then I, when I send a reply, I will use this as a destination. The source is pretty clear. My IP address and my port number. I want to say which port number I want to show you. But for example, uh, in our, uh, the Python example we showed earlier, it's a, uh, uh, 12,000. So this is basically what you will do. You will create an address object 
accept the port number, etc. Okay, and then uh, then bind it to the socket. Okay, so here's a uh, what to do. Okay, so every machine will have multiple network interface, right? So you sometimes you can have Wi-Fi, you can have Ethernet, right? And uh, uh, you know even Bluetooth. Okay, so you need to bind bind to which one. Okay. And uh, each network interface has its own IP address, right? So for example, if you use, use IF configure, you will see, hey, Ethernet is this IP address, right? My Wi-Fi has another IP address, okay? So you need to bind to your, because you are the server, you need to bind to your IP address. But that IP address should be the IP address you want to receive this request, right? Whether you want to receive through the Wi-Fi link or you want to receive through the, the Ethernet link, right? Okay. And uh, so, uh, yeah, we will, we will talk it later, right? So we'll also need a port number, okay? So the parameters, firstly, remember we previously see the socket function, right? We have a socket function that we create. It's an embodied socket, right? We just uh, create a socket object, but it's not specified uh, what's IP address, what's a port number, right? Bind really say, hey, I want to associate a IP address and a port number into this address object, and then throw it as a second argument into this function. And the length is just the, the size of this, uh, this uh, you know, object, okay? Uh, in Python and in Java, I, I don't think you need the length anymore okay? because you know, this is more like a C kind of stuff, right? When you have a pointer, it's like an array. You need to know how long the array is, right? It does not handle the array out of range protection, but uh, in more advanced uh, like in a C++, you don't care about this, okay? And uh, so, yeah, it returns zero when it succeeds, right? Which you bind is successful. If you see minus one, then you know that the bind fails. Okay, and there will be error codes that you can check. Okay, and uh, so there's uh, some C libraries, of course, P error, etc. But but that may be out of the scope. Okay. And uh, if you see minus one, usually you will check the error stream. Okay, then then you will find what's the problem. So this, uh, there's a library, uh, error dot h or something. Or error number dot h. I don't remember exactly. So then there's a like the port number concept, right? So uh, port number uh, because it's a uh, written, you know, when you you have the protocol, right? The first block could be let me see the first. Uh, I think the color is not wrong. Just for example, you can have a block of IP address. Okay, then you have a, a block of Port number. Okay. The IP address we know that is uh, 32 bit. Okay, right. But in, in the protocol, uh, we only allocate uh, maybe 16 bit. Okay, to to the port number. Okay, that means you know you know so many bits. Each bit can be zero or one. Right, so the other can be zero or one. So we have two, two, two times two. Right, all the way we, we have two to the power 16 possible different kind of strings of zero one. Okay, so that maximum possible number. Is this number, okay? The number of ports. Okay. This is uh, this number is two to the power of sixteen minus one. Okay. Why do we minus one? It's minus one because if every every bit choose zero, by right, then the whole bit is zero. But we don't have zero port. Okay. Zero port is a reserve to mean that we can bind to any port. Okay. Right. So basically, I will receive message from any port. This is potentially useful for, for example, Wireshark. So it's kind of, uh, you know, package, uh, uh, you know, package wrapping software to analyze different packets. Right? I, I don't care about which software it, it goes to. I always need to check that. Okay. Then like, uh, or do some attacking, right? So then you can put, uh, or examining all the packets coming into your machine. Right? So you can use a zero. Zero is a wider card for the port. And usually, as we said, port number less than, uh, one, you know, one k. Uh, yeah, this is sixteen bit. I think that's what I uh, Less than one k is reserved, right? We see that uh, HTTPS is, I think, a four three three or three three four. I, I don't remember, but the you know, the for example, FTP is twenty one and the HTTP is eighty. Okay. And uh, so these are the small numbers that are well known. And uh, it's only a privileged process may make sense. Right? So usually, you know, when you install stuff, you need to sudo or you, you know, need to allow register, register table, uh, you know, installation, right? 
that means your super user is already grunting those uh, like FTP software, etc. Right? And this becomes a privileged uh, programs. Okay, so other people cannot use a port number that's on one k. Okay, because they are reserved. They are, for example, if you are using the same port number as a well-known program like an email, right? So then the email client will get mixed message, right? Not only the message about email, but also the other client sending to you. Okay, then it um, like your email client does not know how to interpret. And uh, so does this cause security issues? For sure, we will have security issues. The reason is very simple, right? Uh, because we know these port numbers are likely to have like an email uh, client or email server, right? And we know that there's a maybe web, web server, et cetera, right? Because their port numbers are fixed, right? Then we can scan the port numbers, right? I send a, send a packet, uh, by for, for loop over the set of port number, I think is what they use. So I can see whether I can attack them. Right? If I see, hey, uh, that's the 80 is responding to me, right? So I know that there's an HTTP server there. Right? I, then I will try to frame my content in a way that I can attack, attack this server because there's a program running there. And uh, let me see. So, uh, so another common issue is this, right? So maybe people will ask, I tried to open a port, but I got an error, right? So why this can happen, right? Because uh, for example, when you bind, I want to bind to port 80, I'll get an error, right? There are two possibilities. One possibility is that it of called a uh, port collision, which means that there's another application already bind to, the, to, to this, uh, another program already bind to this port, right? And then when you, when you say you want to call the bind again, right? For example, I firstly bind to uh, one, two, three, four, five, for example, okay? Then I bind to one, two, three, four, five again. So the bind function will return a minus one. This is because what? This is because I have another program already running on that port. Your new program cannot re reduce that port, okay? Another possibility is called uh, the dangling socket, okay? So dangling socket means you use a socket and it's finished but you forget to close it, right? When you forget to close it, the result is not, uh, you know, released, right? So you cannot use it, okay? Because uh, so the result is holding, okay? So uh, this is a common error already in use, okay? Yeah. So either you forget to close, okay? Or you, for example, uh, or, or, or you, you use the same port number as another program running on the same server. So the OS kernel keeps the socket alive in memory, okay? And this even happens after you call close, right? Usually there will be a one minute timeout, which means after you call close, if you previously use port one, two, three, four, five, within one minute, if you bind to one, two, three, four, five again, it will not allow you, it will give you none, okay? Uh, we will see why later, okay? Because, you know, TCP is, uh, you know, a, it says a three-way handshake, right? Basically, uh, you need to make sure uh, when you close, you need to tell the other side you are closed. The other side find it, and the other side will close. Right? But we need it to get some time out, okay? Otherwise, if you close and uh, just leave, right? This program is gone, okay? But the other side is still trying to close it with you, right? Because, you know, this is the connection, uh, you know, TCP builds a channel, builds a connection, secure the connection. Then you need to respond to the other side. Make sure, the, the, let's say, the other side is closed before you can close. Okay, so there could be this reason that even after close, within one minute, you still cannot bind to that port. And we will see more details why TCP is acting like that later. Okay. Just, just to keep in mind, when you close right in the server side, when you close, you need to make sure the other side have finished the, the communication with you to, to make sure that that program closes, okay? If not, uh, it will keep communicating with you, but your program no longer is here, right? It will fail to close right, on the client side. So again, we can allow socket reuse, right? Because you know, when you open a new socket, or uh, you know, uh, yes, here here is the disagree, right? TCP socket is a multi-step process. Okay, you need to contact the remote machine. I'm closing, right? And then remote machine must acknowledge it's closing. What if, what if you tell the other side uh, you are closing, but you know somehow the packet dropped, right? The other client will have this connection on forever, right? So that's why you need to wait for a while, and this 
if they, they time out, they will ask you again, right? If you are not there, then there's no retransmission, right? It will wait for that, okay? And so, so we can allow, sorry, we can allow socket reuse by this function. So that socket option, uh, you know, uh, allow reuse, right? Then we can, we can kind of, we don't need to close. I, I immediately re reuse the socket, right? Because when you close the socket, it will release the result, right? Like uh, clear the buffer, etc. That takes some time, okay? And especially another time is a timeout time, right? You need to spend one minute until, you know, the server socket is clear that it responds to all the clients, close requests. Requirement, right? Uh, I, I mean, the, the, your, your server need to tell everyone you are closed, but right? others need to acknowledge you. But right? everyone acknowledges, then you can, you can go. Okay. And this woman, it also takes time. So maybe it's desirable if you can reuse it, right? So here, if you are interested, you can look at this option, right? If I, I just use that connection, but I will immediately create another connection, okay? Why not just reuse the previous one right? using the same port? Basically. Now remember that we need to uh, we need to put a object into our bind function, right? So how does an object looking like? Let's take a look. Okay, so here's uh, what, what what it looked like. But again, this is uh, you know an object in C. Okay, we have a struct. Right? So this is a struct. This is a data type. This is the object name. My address. Okay. So here you can see that we will initially set everything to zero, right? So and then uh, because zero means there's no information, right? Because we only set some of the fields. The other fields we want to keep them zero. Okay. But I think in Python, by default, we will do this in constructor for you. Okay. This is seed, so we don't even have OP, we don't have the constructor. So we have to set those things ourselves. Okay. Otherwise, it will be random numbers. Okay. And uh, so then you have a family field, right? So then you need to say, hey, I want to use a, a this same, right? So the the IPv4, okay. But we need to transmit it into uh, a you know a type that uh, this can understand. We will go to H2NS uh, later, okay. So this is like a, a we will see that in the next page, okay. And then we have you know my uh, the port number you want to bind to, right? So you need to also assign to this object. And this object will finally get to the bind function, right? the second object. Okay. And then we also need to give the IP address. Right? The IP address in the in this address, right? the port, the address is family. Family is the IP port. Right? This uh, port and address is for TCP. Right? IP, IP also needs that right? to use. Okay? So port is mainly for TCP. Okay. And you can see that. Uh, uh, so this is the address, right? You want to use this address, but this is a string. Right? Because this is a string, you need to use a function to convert into the, the format, which is n step, okay? So again, these are probably the constant and integers, right? And this is a string. String, you, you need to convert to a, a format that it's stand, stand, we can stand, right? So these, con uh, these constant integers, why do we still need a, a function uh, to convert into specific type and then assign to them? Right, so this is the question. Okay. Let me see whether we finish the previous slide. Okay. Yeah, so, so structure, this is the, the, the object, right? Called a struct is an object, okay? For storing name information. In, in C then, then you can also, in C++ you can use class, okay, it's the same. Class is by default private, struct by default public, because by that time in C, there's no concept of public. Uh, private, right? So everything is public. You can even put function there if you see the okay? But this is C, so you can only have fields, right? You see before, okay? And so if you put, uh, you know, the reason why we need a uh, less of size of, right? because, you know, IPv4, if this is IPv4, then, you know, this address is 32-bit, right? We will assign 32-bit integer here. If we are using IPv6, then this will be longer, like double the size maybe. Okay, or even more, right? it's uh, 128 bit. Right? It's probably four times that many, okay? If that is the case, so the length will be different, right? Even if it's the same structure, the length will be different for different structures. So we still need this length, okay? 
All right, so now let's look at why, even if the input is integers, right? Why do we care about uh, converting them, right? It seems like we convert an integer to another integer. Right? So this is because we have the concept of little India and the big India. I'm not sure whether uh, you understand what they are. Okay, this is basically when you give a number, right? So you have uh, usually, let's say an integer uh, can be considered as, let's say, uh, four bytes, right? So for example, this byte could be zero, one, one, blah, blah, blah. So this could be zero, one, one, one. And this could be uh, one, zero, one. Okay. This could be zero, 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 something. Okay. But when you interpret it, there are different ways, right? You think this is the first one, this is the second one, this is the third one, and this is the fourth one. Then you can count them in this order, right? Another way is you think this is the first one, right? This is the second one. This is the third one. This is the first one. Okay. If you have interest, you can look into that. So this. The first method called little Indian, and the second method is called a big Indian. But apparently, different different machines have different. Maybe some machines like uh, Intel, you know, they will use this. Some other like uh, other machines, IBM, you know, some some other machines may be using another. Okay, so depending on hardware, right, the, the same integer will be represented differently in different machines. But when you send stuff into the protocol and on the wire, these bits should be unique, right? So we need to make sure that. So when you put this kind of integer in here, we need to give you another translate integer that is consistent, okay? So that's the purpose of these functions, right? So, so not a big deal, it's, it's your know, local machine because your local machine always follow one, one Indian basically, either all little India or big India, right? Your, your CPU, your, Will, will handle that. Right? So understand how to com compose the bytes into an integer and then do addition. Okay. But what if you communicate right over the network and send to another machine, right? Because this machine may be in little Indian, but that machine may be in big Indian. They will translate the integer wrong. Okay. So we need to have a network byte order, right? So basically we 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 assume that everything is big Indian when we put on the Y. For example, if you have a little India machine and then your integer will be translated to a big India. If your machine is already big India, then it will just uh, stay as this, right? And you know, uh, x86 is always little India, right? So which means usually if we are using like a Windows machine these days, right? It's always, you know, we are always, when calling this function, always translate from little India to big India and then put the other one, okay? Because in your, your machine is little, no matter it's in memory or in your register of the CPU. See, it's little. And uh, so, yes, this is a function converting uh, host order to network order. Right? Your host order could, could be big or little, right? But your network order is always big. Okay? So, uh, you know, what is H2NS? Right? What is it? H2NS means host to network shock. Okay? Shock. Shock is 16. 16 bits, just the port number of bits, okay? Uh, one moment, let me see the chat. Okay, so I, I will, uh, I see a student have some question, okay? Uh, I, I will stay on the line, so after the uh, after the class and uh, for one or two minutes, if you have question, ask me that one. Thank you. And uh, so the other function, right, H2 and L, right, so, what is L? L is, uh, you know, long, long is 32 bits, okay? So this is 32 bits. And there's also, so whatever number, if you know it's a short number, you put here, right? Like a port number, we use S, right? But for IP address, probably what L. Okay, if you look at, uh, I think we have the previous example. Let, let me just, uh, yeah, there's some delay in the slides. And, Yeah, you can see here where you an S, okay? Because these are the, you know, this port number is 16 bits. Okay, so where you okay. It seems that this constant is also 16 bits right? because we're also. And uh, let me see. Here we also have, you know, uh, you know, N to H, right? What is the, uh, into H, right? And the H star means also have S and L, right? Long and short. So you can see H to N is host to network, right? N to H is network host, right? 
So basically, when you go from host to network, which means you send something, right? And next to host, when you receive something, right? and uh, you want to assign, for example, you get a request from a client, then you want to translate this packet number into your, 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 your structures, your objects, uh, you know, integer, those kinds of things. That's how you use this. I, I believe that for the socket API of Java and Python, probably these details has been handled down there, right? Because they can, they can detect those things and done that for you, right? But, but, that, but that time you see, we don't have even class and the object program, right? So not OOP, because these are very really low level details. But understanding them helps you understand a little bit deeper about you know, the design of the software. Okay. So, uh, so you can also use so-called binding shortcuts because for example, you, sometimes you don't care, right? You can use a wildcard, right? And as we said, zero is reserved to, to be a wildcard, means you can match to anything, okay? So for example, if you don't care about what the port number is, right? You can just say, hey, I wanna use port number zero, so that means, uh, in that case, actually, you know, when you bind to somewhere, right, you always need a port number. Okay, so so it will when you, you put this and then send this address object to the bind function, it will assign a random port to you. Of course, the random port will, should not be already occupied. Okay? But this is really the behavior you want. Why? Who can answer me? Assuming you have a server, you are binding, you never want to. Uh, create a, uh, you know, just like an operating system assign you a port number that's available. Do you know why? Yeah, so if you are server, you need to let everyone know the port, right? Because the client need to know the port and communicate with you, right? Of course you cannot randomly assign a port number, okay? Like the 12,000, right? If the client don't know, the client need to guess and scan all the port numbers, okay? So usually, when you, you are the server, you need to choose a port number and tell everyone it's a well-known port number, okay? But if you are a client, you can do that, right? Because a client, uh, you can just uh, take uh, whatever port number that is still available and then to send to the server, okay? The packet will contains the port number. So it, the server will respond to your program. Another case is that if you don't care about IP address, right? If you don't care about IP address, you can use zero again. Here, for example, uh, when we assign, remember we, we assign the IPv4 and then the port number and the IP address. Right. IP address, we can use this. This is also zero, by the way, it's a constant, okay? And if you say IP address zero, that means don't bind to a specific IP address, okay? That means it's a wider card, any IP address is fine, okay? So traffic on any interface will reach the same. What does that mean? That means, I don't care about who is sending the, the request to me, okay? I will always answer, right? In that case, this is actually what we want, right? So I want to bind to any, I want to listen to anyone, whatever the IP address is, I do want it. But my port number should be a well-known port number. I should have put a port number, okay? So keep in mind the, the port number is actually the port number on the server side, my port number. The IP address when you bind is the IP address I want I want the client to have, right? So, uh, the so reason is that I'm, I'm in my machine, right? I know my IP address. I don't need to uh, have another person specify the IP address for me, right? So the IP address is really for the client. But usually we will take everyone's IP address. It's a wide account, okay? And this IP address is usually what the behavior you want for the server, but the port number is really you don't want. You want to fix a port number, okay? So the client knows which port number to communicate with. Any questions? Okay, then let's go on. So we also have the listen function. Right? So if we look at the, oh, by the way, so here you can also see all the explanations uh, here. Okay, so there's details, like what is the structure of this object, right? So what is the socket IDDR, right? So you have a family, you have the char, but this thing itself has, has additional stuff. Right? So that's why we are, we are formatting like this, okay? Again, this is really low level C, C style. So, so you, you, if you, you are familiar with C, you can directly use this. Otherwise, you may consider it in Python or even Java if you're not familiar. Okay. And next, let's look at the uh, listen. Right, so let's look at the listen. Okay. 
So again, now that, for example, you create a socket using socket function, and then you bind to a port number, right? Because the IP address will be zero, basically. Listen to everyone, okay? Then you, 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 can, you can start this thing, right? Because you, you know the server need to loop on the interface, right, the socket. And whenever you receive something, uh, you need to answer. Right? So this is a listen function that is doing, okay? So there are two integers to, so uh, it's used on server side and start waiting around a client, right? By, uh, this client was called connect and you will accept. Again, which socket, right? As we said, socket is the uh, integer, right? So socket is just always a handle. Right? And uh, so the backlog is, uh, you know, the less of the pending connection queue, right? For example, if you are answering one by one, you don't have much threading, right? If you are getting somebody's message and you're processing it, but now maybe five more requests comes, right? They, are, they will stay in the queue, okay? So if your, your backlog is five, this is integer value, okay? Then they can all six it. Right. If your backlog is three, three will successfully be accepted and two will be rejected. Right. So, so maybe this client had to wait when, when there's space in the queue. And uh, so new connection will wait around until you accept it. Right. So, but there's just so many of them that you can, you can put in the queue and it will let them work, okay? <coughs> yeah, usually we will just put it into a large number like 1,000, right? So for example, when you're busy, maybe 1,000 people some tenders connect to you, but right? that's fine. You can still handle that. Okay. Usually, you concurrent access hundred, uh, a few, uh, a few hundreds, right? So unless you are you are Google Q or search server, right? So that's a different story. Okay, you are just uh, doing a simple, you know, logging, like a J two E kind of application, right? So usually, you just have maybe peak hours, uh, eight hundred people some tenders to you. Okay, but again, if it's beyond that, it's fine. Uh, the request will be rejected for for error or something. Right? So it, it, I think it's another error, right? So uh, another error code for for it's not reachable. You are reachable, but you are rejected. It's another thing. Okay, and then you can try again when the queue is cleared. Then you can get. Okay? So this listen will return zero for success, which means the server program is running and I keep listening, uh, you know, on the channel. Okay, minus one is as an error. For example. Uh, Yes, yes, there could be some device issues or network is down. Okay. And then once you have, you know, you have that, listen, right? You will write a while loop where you will, you will just try to hold the channel and see whether there's something coming. If there's something coming, then you will call the accept function to accept it, okay? But due to the time, I think uh, we will stop here and uh, we'll continue next time. Okay, just keep in mind before the while loop where you keep serving, and processing each request, you have three steps, right? The first is socket, where you create a socket object. The second is bind. In order to, to bind, you need to create an address object, right? And then you assign the port number uh, that you want everyone to connect to. And it also put a zero as an IP address because you want uh, to serve everybody, right? And finally, uh, you need to uh, start this server, right? Which means you, you need to listen. Okay, after binding this, so that the uh, channel is pulled from time to time and you see whether there's some message. Right? There's a backlog, which means uh, how many queue of pending requests you can get. Right? Beyond that, maybe the request will be rejected. Right? The client have to try later. Okay? So that's pretty much for these three functions and we will continue with accept next time. Thank you. And uh, I will, uh, let me see, let's take uh, attendance. I will just a quick, a really quick attempt. Okay, so. That's just the call three names on each list, okay? Okay. Uh, Daija. Right, am I pronounced correctly? Daja Jura? Yes, you? I'm here. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me uh, Swap Neil. Swap Neil, are you here? Here, here. Let's look at the last one. Okay. Uh, Angus, Angus, are you here? Angus Wong? Angus? No? Let's look at the other list. Uh, 
Scylla. Skyler. Skyler, sorry, Skyler, okay. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, Taisha? Taisha? Taisha Harris, are you here? No? Okay, I'm here. Oh, you are here, okay. Uh, okay. We'll pick the last one, okay. Alaya, Alaya, are you here? Alaya Robinson? I'm here. Okay, thank you. So that's all for today. I will be here for two more minutes. If you have a question, feel free to answer. Oh, ask. Okay, I will answer you. The video. I will... have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So it's from uh, the lecture three about the architecture. Mm -hmm. um, when I was going over it, you had an example of like a, I think a posted office, a post office worker. Mm -hmm. Could you go over that? Because I was kind of confused as far I think it had to do with the transport layer. Okay, you want to go to that slide? You mean? It was a lecture three architecture. It's from a yeah, let, let January twenty. Okay, let me find it. Uh, You mean this one? Yes, this is, that's it. Yeah, this is a, a analogy, right? So, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's just a, a example of telling you that it's like you are, you are using the network core and you are sending your information there. Like you, for example, you have an application information putting the TCP connection, okay, that we, for example, you can use circuit programming and it will throw to the, like say, let's say your network uh, device and it was sent to the other side and the SR will see the data. So for users, basically, uh, you know, this is like a circuit program that handles this, right, down there, okay? Uh, users uh, don't know how this is routed to the destination, okay? This uh, maybe IPs do it, okay? But the, the down there, these layers will not have information about the application layer, so will not see your data. Okay? So this actually is a desired behavior. You will have the safety, the security. Uh, does, uh, is this clear? Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I think I was just overthinking it. Yeah, yeah, it's just analogy, right? So it's, you know, it's, it's just uh, helping you understand. Okay. okay, cool, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Because I see that one student want to ask me questions about the lab or something earlier, right? So, Luke, Luke Norris, are, are you here? Are you, uh, let me see. Uh, I got no questions, just appreciate the class. Have a good one. Ooh. Oh, okay, got it, okay. So I will All see right, you guys uh, maybe on, uh, you know, uh, on Wednesday, okay. Uh, uh, please enjoy the rest of the day and if you have any questions, just send me an email, I will ask you a question. Thank you.